difference between Islam and culture, and we touched upon that when Hassan was speaking, right, regarding that hat and whatnot. So basically, Islam is what is given by God, right? And it, it's not very strict. It's a foundation. It's a boundary. And within that boundary, you have a lot of uh, flexibility to do various things. So a quick example of that would be this carpet, right? Is this carpet, having a carpet in the mosque from Islam? No, right? It's a, it's a, it's a cultural thing. It's a societal thing that, you know, you have it. You know, it's, it's, it feels nice and so on and so forth. It's comfortable. So you have it. It's not part of the Islam. You can have a mosque without a carpet, right? Likewise, you guys took off your shoes when you were entering. Is that from Islam or culture? Would God be... Would it be a sin against God to walk in the mosque with shoes? No, right? We do it because this is how most people would be, and they would take off their shoes, and they don't want dirt because you, you bow down, you prostrate, and so on and so forth. So it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't work out well. But it's a cultural, societal thing, not an Islamic thing. Likewise, so be aware of that. So if a Muslim does something, it does not mean he is representing Islam, right? If a Muslim country does something, it does not mean he is representing Islam. If a Muslim group does something, does not mean he or she is, or they are representing Islam. Okay, so now some terminologies. Islam and Christianity, special slides for you guys. So, anybody knows about Waraqa ibn Nawfal? So that was a Christian man, the first person from historical purposes, our uh, sister student of history there, very good. Uh, he was the first one to testify and confirm to the truth of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because you can imagine a man re receiving revelation for the first time, Angel Gabriel coming to him and reading to him and reciting the words of Allah to him, and he would be shocked, right? So he went. He goes to his wife. He's concerned. What's going on? What is this thing? Is it true? What's going on? And his wife takes him to her cousin who was a Christian convert, like he had accepted Christianity, a scholar, and he, and he asked the prophet to describe the angel as he saw him. He confirmed, he testified that this is the angel Gabriel who used to come to Moses and Jesus and so on and so forth. And, if I, and he was an old man by then. If I were to live long enough till you receive the message and you call to that message, I will surely support you. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two special verses in his book, Quran, translation of which is that you will find the nearest of them in affection to the believers, Muslims, the ones who follow the Prophet of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa are the ones who call themselves Christians. That is because among them are priests and monks and because they are not arrogant. Remember, arrogance versus ignorance. And the verses continues, when they hear what has been revealed to the messenger, right? This is what I was talking about. The fingerprint, the lock, the key, when it comes, it makes sense to people. When they hear what has been revealed to the messenger, you see their eyes overflowing with tears because of what they have recognized of the truth. They say, our Lord, we have believed, so register us among the witnesses. This is chapter five, verse 82 and 83. Islam and Christianity, take a snapshot, a picture if you guys can. Very amazing resources, three links up there for you. Uh, talks about the verses in present day Bible, which we believe are hinting towards Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa How is Jesus viewed in Islam? And other books on Jesus in Islam on these three things. Got that? <laughs> is eligible for punishment, right? So a sin is eligible for punishment does not mean there will be a punishment, right? So a sin can be forgiven as we saw in the heading of salvation, right? A sin can be forgiven by true repentance. A sin can be forgiven by good deeds, you know, being sorry and so on and so forth. So it's not the, um, it's not the, I mean, you can still be a Muslim, right? Because like, am I 100% compliant to God? Nobody is 100% compliant to God, right? Everybody has mistakes and shortcomings. I try to be, at least I'm apparently 100% compliant to God, right? 
So the point is, yeah, you try, you always have things that, that you have to ask for forgiveness, and, you know, God erases from his mercy and so on and so forth. So likewise, you know, somebody can drink alcohol, eat pork, and still be Muslim. He just is dealing with those issues, right? Because he knows I shouldn't do it, but just the fact that you did it doesn't make, make, doesn't make you non-Muslim, right? As long as you acknowledge the law, right? Just like Adam, right? He disobeyed too, right? He ate from the tree, so it's like somebody eating from pork, right? So you can still be Muslim, but non-compliant, a sin, something eligible for punishment, something that will put you away from Allah. Then you have to run faster to get closer to Him, right? But you can still be a Muslim. But if you deny that, I don't think God has forbidden, uh, uh, I don't think God has ordered hijab, God hasn't ordered pork, then that's a different situation. Then the arrogance is kicking in, right? Just like Satan, like, why should I bow down to Adam? Clear? So you guys are like, wow, I didn't know we can have no hijab and alcohol and pork and, yeah. Okay, we're going to start because I saw him first. Uh, well, I always have questions. Um, uh, uh, I'm wondering, I, reading the slide from the Quran, it talked about covering the outer garments. Right, I, I'd have to look at the slide again. I didn't see it mention anything about the head. Great question, right? So this is English, right? So when you go into Arabic details, right, then you see that it says to pull garment that will be pulled from the head. One. Second thing is you don't take one verse. You have explanation, right? And most importantly, you have the implementation of the prophet himself, right? So who, who would be the first person to implement that verse? His wives and his daughters, right? And his companions. So you go back to that. How was their understanding? What were they allowing? What were they prohibiting? And so on and so forth. And that's in general for everything else as well. So whenever there's dispute, you go back to that original understanding. Sorry. So no, 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 don't be sorry. So, so if it is in the original <laughs> Arabic that it mentions point over the head, why wouldn't it come down through the translation in English? Well, so it depends on who translated it and where I copy pasted from, right? <laughs> <laughs> and okay. I, I, we have to tell them about the clear Quran. Right, so, but again, translation is just like you're trying to capture it like in four words, right? So, let me actually say what it said. <coughs> yeah, so to draw their outer garments around them, right? So, there's a part, there's partly understanding of that as, as, as the will as well. And then there are other details like that we know from the explanation as well as the habits uh, of how they actually implemented the order. When, it, when in the Quran, in the translation, it has the parenthesis? Um, okay. What is that? Is that um, what is that? Right. So basically, what, what they're trying to do is that. Um, so there's certain thing when I'm speaking to you. There's obviously a context, right? But if you're going to take a verse without context, right? So so they would put in the parentheses to explain. So for example, if these women are in that on that side, there's no men, right? They don't have to cover their heads. Right? So now, it does not mention that detail in that words because certain things are implied, as I said, by practice, by knowledge, and so on and so forth. So a translator would sometimes add brackets. So likewise, different translations would have different levels of bracketing or explanation, right? So it's not actually... The it's not part it's of not the word. Quran. It's not part of yeah, the word. Yeah. Well, none of this, technically, if you were to be very technical, this is English, so none of that is Quran, but it's just uh, trying to get as close to Quran as That's possible. The, the Quran is only the Arabic text. Any other language, it's just a translation. It has no any significance. It, you could have errors, you have, but the Quran, it has zero errors. So that's why every Muslim who wants to learn the religion, they have to learn Arabic. Arabic is the basics for the for to learn your religion properly. If you want to recite, if you want to pray, we all only recite in Arabic. You can't pray in any other language. So that's why every Muslim, no matter what nationality, they end up learning how to read the Quran in Arabic. You know, so that's the difference. Okay. So this is again your perception, liberation versus oppression. Right, so now, I mean, again, I don't, I don't think you guys need that, but just like from a society perspective, how sometimes people make a big deal about hijab and like as if it's the only thing for the Muslims, you know, this would give some uh, highlights. Interesting, all these ladies do that. So, so actually, if you go back to it, if you remember what I was talking about earlier, about that baseline in the heart, so these are part of those things which are part of your natural instincts to cover up, 
right? And as we have been seeing, like, you know, from generation and generations. Oh, more. <laughs> All right, now the fun topic jihad versus terrorism. Okay, so any questions about hijab? Feels comfortable? Um, so I have a friend, a Muslim friend, um, at one of my university, at one of the universities we're from, and she's like decided to stop wearing her hijab. Mm -hmm. So, from what it sounds like, whether or not she would like, from the viewpoint, like she would be forgiven depends on like her heart. It, like, right. Her yeah. Heart. I mean, so there, there's 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 indications, right? So if a heart is sound, you would see submission in general, right? Maybe she might come back to it. There may be a whole bunch of different things that are happening, right? But je the point was that, you know, somebody, you, I can't say she's not a Muslim, right? Just because she disobeys one law. If she denies it and she denies Quran, then it becomes a bit more serious, right? Okay. All right, so we're going to talk about jihad and terrorism.